It is Midday Live. Lawrence Vaughn is out. Bobby Chacon, retired FBI agent, attorney, is here visiting with me. And we are going to be joined by Michelle Hannessy, President, Association of Deputy District Attorney General Attorneys. Uh, Michelle, welcome. Thank you very much. So uh, reading about this and violent crimes and things that were uh, qualified as nonviolent crimes by Prop 47 makes you only, well, for the average person, makes you kind of shake your head. Uh, are we going to be able to undo this? Well, we're going to try. The Reducing Crime and Keeping California Safe Act uh, will fix some of these problems. Unfortunately, it did not qualify for the 2018 election, but will be on the 2020 ballot. And what will be in there? Well, among other things, it does classify uh, a, a whole bunch of new crimes as violent for purposes of early release and only for purposes of only release. Things like human trafficking of a minor for sex, assault on a police officer, domestic violence, all kinds of crimes that the average citizen would consider to be violent. It also restores DNA collection for some low-level crimes, which have been scientifically proven to help solve high-level crimes, violent crimes. Mm. Are, are you pre, are you getting any pushback on this? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the governor does not like it at all, and a lot of our legislators don't like it at all. Because the, the prisons it. will swell again, or what? Well, I guess their their hypothetical reason is the prisons will swell again, but some of it doesn't really address the prisons swelling at all. And the other the other side of that cost, when they're trying to save money on incarcerating people. They never seem to want to talk about the cost to victims who have their cars burglarized or stolen, who have their homes broken into, who have their businesses stolen from. Yeah, it's crazy. Do you have, do you have any questions, Bobby, about this? No, I mean, I applaud this effort. I think this is this is long overdue. I think this this whole classification of nonviolent and violent from the outset, uh, you know, has been absolutely horrendous and driven by uh, you know, partly by the defense bar who has a vested interest in, in, in early release and some of these things. And so I, I think that, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, there's Michelle, there's, we still have a concern. I sometimes have a concern about things that are actually plea bargained down. You can get somebody that's actually arrested for a very violent act and through the plea bargaining process, will plea bargain to what appears to be a nonviolent act. Or which, in, in the eyes, of, through the prism of Prop 47, is a nonviolent right. act. Right. And, and, and on their record, they don't have, then, a violent act conviction or incarceration. And, and it really is troubling because, you know, that is such a prevalent, at least, you know, in my day, it was such a prevalent way of, of defense attorneys uh, adjudicating cases is to plead it down. And, and that's what they were always doing. They were pleading felonies down to, you know, violent felonies down to either non violent felonies or even misdemeanors and and stuff is there any is there anything in, like that in in the fix there's nothing like that because uh, fortunately or unfortunately depending on how you look at it plea bargaining plea bargaining is an inherent part of our system and both sides have to weigh the, the benefit and cost of that on a case-by-case -case basis um, and i can think of an example recently where we allowed an individual who had committed what was charged as a violent crime to ultimately earn a conviction for a nonviolent crime by doing a number of things while on a program being supervised by the district attorney's office, but also paying an enormous amount of medical restitution to the person that they injured. The thing is, we could not have gotten that medical restitution for the victim if that person had just been sent to prison. Right. I mean, so that so at least at least we're, the the people are getting something out of it. Right. Right. What do we, what do we need? What's the average person need to do to get behind this? Well, um, they can certainly can still go to the website and donate because getting just getting the initiative on the ballot is part one. But we still have to spread information to the public through through advertising and media. Because the problem is it's hard for the public to know what these ballot initiatives say just by reading the description. Right. It's impossible. Description right. In the photo pamphlet. So the, the website is, is keepcalsafe.org, and they can still make contributions there and then just share it on social media. All right. Well, it certainly seems like something we should get behind and try to vote in because I I, I don't understand how anybody could look at Prop Forty Seven and consider it a success. It, it's. I mean, Michelle. I mean, I'm reading one of the, uh, the leaflets on it. I mean, uh, in this, a lot of people may not even know this. I mean, is under the prop is 
rape of an unconscious person treated as a nonviolent yes, offense? Yes, it is. And, and trafficking yeah. for child porn. Uh, yeah. I think I think most pu- people, if they were knowledgeable about that, would be outraged. Oh, we've been talking about it for a couple of years. There, right. there are 14 different things that they list here that are insanely violent. Yes. Like if you beat a woman with a pipe in a domestic violence episode, not violent, not violent. Uh, I mean, by whose definition? Of, I mean, the, the, that's, that's the point. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely arbitrary, and it was really clearly designed for political expediency and not for the not for the public benefit. That's for sure. Right. Eight hundred two 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 five two two two. If you'd like to make a comment on this, we'd like to hear it. Michelle, you want to stay with us across the break? Sure. Okay. Michelle Hennessy is the president of the Association of Deputy District Attorney. We will uh, continue this conversation again. If you want to be a part of it, eight hundred two 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 five two two two. Bobby Schoen, retired FBI agent, attorney, sitting in for Lawrence Vaughn. I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Midday Live. Midday Live, Lawrence Vaughn, Dr. Drew. Lauren is out today, and Bobby Schoen is sitting in. We are speaking with Michelle Hennessy. She is the president of the Association of Deputy District Attorneys. Keep California Safe, a project uh, of the California Public Safety Partnership Issues Committee. And uh, we should be looking for this on the ballot in in, in uh, the fall, correct? 2020. 2020. 2020. It's going to take that long? Yeah. Well, there was a deadline. There were two deadlines the county registrar recorders needed to meet when they were validating signatures, and they met the one to qualify it for 2020, but the Secretary of State didn't notify them about the earlier deadline to make sure it got on 2018. So guess what? They didn't do the count in time. That seems a little like there was some obfuscation involved in this. Am I wrong? Hmm. Yeah. Or the- just, you know, it, it certainly makes one wonder. Wow. I mean, it's certainly uh, the, every other initiative, ballot initiative that I've been speaking about or two this last six months seem to be rushed onto the ballot. No problem. Huh. Yeah. And and they a lot of them, you know, they had the signatures in time to get the count done, but they were told a different date. And both dates are correct. They're just for, for different purposes. Wow. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to take some calls for you guys. 800-222-5222. This is uh, Hector. And we had a comment there, a question, Hector? Yes. Hi. Um, now that the Ninth nice District Court of Appeal has allowed open carry, uh, how is that going to affect crime? And has uh, crime gotten higher in Ventura and Orange County now that they have a CCWs? Let's ask uh, Michelle. You've got an answer on that one? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a big Second Amendment fan, and I ask the same thing of my friends who are really up to speed on this stuff. And I don't think it's going to affect anything in California because the lawsuit was based on Hawaii law, which basically prohibited any carry. They said you are not exercising discretion when you say no one can have a carry permit. California, however, does issue carry carry permits, very limited, very few. But you can't say they're not exercising discretion when they are issuing them. So it's probably not going to directly affect California. And, And we're in that window now, are we not? Yes. I mean, it's an uh, act. Yeah, Windows is, open for this. This case is probably going to get appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. That'd be interesting. Uh, all right. Well, in, so, I, again, I'm a little unclear what we need to do. In the meantime, until you get this thing on the ballot, is the, are, can the legislation legislators be sort of urged to sort of move towards something rational to keep California safe? They can and they should. And there have been... Over over a dozen, over two dozen different items of legislation passed during the time that Prop 47 has been in effect and 57 has been in effect. And they're either killed in committee or some of them go all the way to the governor and the governor refuses to sign them. So some of our legislators are trying to fix it, but, but getting defeated and others clearly are not. And what people need to do is is call their legislators office. It really makes a big difference. Call them and say, I don't like what's going on in my community because of Prop 47. You need to fix this. I, I tried calling my uh, – the first time in my life I called a state senator and a state uh, assemblyman, and I found it very unsatisfying. The secretary just goes, which AB is it? Which one do you want yeah. to complain about? Which one do you want to support? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, we don't really know what they're about. I, I, what, which one? What's the number? And it was, it was extremely unsatisfying. Is there, is there a more effective way to get at them? Well, they, and if you go to their websites, they'll have a link where you can write an email, but then they always give a word limit. Um, And it is very unsatisfying. But the thing is, they do find out about the calls. And if they get 40 phone calls on the same issue, they know. And their, quote, principles 
that they stand behind shift very quickly when they start becoming concerned about it, get, getting elected out of office. Well, why don't we just target people on the radio and <laughs> start talking about it publicly? Please. And, and, and by the way, why doesn't the legal system or legal organizations, I mean, you're the Association of Deputy District Attorneys, why don't other lawyer organizations get together and form a giant coalition and go at it? Oh, my God, what a great idea. Uh, okay. Actually, that's yeah. what the California Public Safety Partnership is. And the first thing that the California Public Safety Partnership did after being formed was try to, to uh, draft a ballot initiative to fix some of the problems, which we did. It's hugely difficult to qualify a ballot initiative, and it takes millions of dollars. And these are, these are people in law enforcement trying to raise millions of dollars in a very short period of time. It's very difficult, but they did it. Now that that battle has come and gone, the coalition can focus their attention elsewhere. So it may be that we start turning that eye towards individual legislators All right. who are harming the, the, the in, process. In the meantime, is there? The can we go to a website and support you? Where do we go? Absolutely. Keep Cal safe. Keep Cal safe. There you go. All of the money there goes to the California Public Safety Partnership. All right, Michelle, thank you so much. Thank you very much. You got it. Michelle Hennessy, President of the Association of Deputy District Attorneys. Bobby Chacon, CDM for Lawrence Vaughn. This is Midday Live.